Hello, welcome to the presentation on undergraduate medicine at Western Sydney University. In this presentation, I'll be talking about all things medicine at Western. So what I've done is broken it up into two parts. In the first part, you'll see um, all about the degree itself um, and what it entails. And then in the second part, we'll talk about the admission process. It's really exciting using the modern facilities here at uni. I don't know how to describe wild in a sense. It's something that you would think that you would only be using in your wildest dreams. Western Sydney University Medical School is one of the new medical schools and we chose to build world-class facilities to offer the people in southwestern Sydney but across Australia, and particularly our rural Australians, an opportunity to work in the best medical school on the planet. Back on, back on, quick, quick, back on. Count out loud, thanks. It's something that was a goal for me um, in terms of university preferences. We get over three and a half thousand applications every year for a hundred places and it allows us to choose not just those that can work hard and that are bright, but those that are absolutely committed to the needs of the communities. Western Sydney's medical course is significant in that we're clinical from day one. There's no sitting in a classroom for years and years. We get out there, we get amongst the patients and we really get a feel for what it is to be a healthcare provider in Australia. You do get those opportunities to be hands-on from the very beginning and that's something that's quite rare. The course of medicine here at Western Sydney University includes the key elements of the basic sciences and that really means anatomy and biochemistry and molecular studies but we also do population based studies so that's understanding broadly what the population's needs are. We look at the professional development and the characteristics of what makes a great kind and confidential doctor and we also teach clinical skills which underpin everyday practice in medicine. Well we think it's great that students have got this opportunity opportunity to experience medical practice in a community setting because that's where most of the ill health happens. It doesn't happen in the teaching hospitals, it happens in the community. Medical practitioners don't work in isolation, we work as part of a team. Experiencing things together, seeing teams operate uh, at close quarters is a valuable experience that they wouldn't get otherwise. In interdisciplinary events you learn how the different disciplines actually work together. It's such a fast-paced, high-stress environment. You know, you learn that you really do need to keep your cool in those situations and go through the proper procedures in order to ensure that the patient stays alive. Some of the clinical training is occurring as far apart as Lismore Bathurst and out to Broken Hill and down to Albury. You might start at Campbelltown, but you could end up anywhere in one of 47 sites across New South Wales. Good research next to good clinical training in medicine brings the brightest and best to work in your area, but it also allows us to continually improve the quality of the care that we give. Okay, so Studying medicine is obviously quite challenging at times, but with the staff and the amazing facilities we have and all the students here at Western Sydney, it's just really helped ensure that my level of motivation is always up there and I don't forget why I came here in the first place to study medicine. So to start out with, we have created a joint medicine program with Charles Sturt University. Um, and this will be starting from next year. So advances in medicine rely on advances in knowledge. It's why over 10 years ago, Western created a new kind of school of medicine. And since then, we've seen more than 600 graduates enter the medical profession. So from 2021, Western is joining with Charles Sturt University in making this program available on both sides of the Blue Mountains. From next year, Western Sydney University and Charles Sturt University will be delivering a Doctor of Medicine course together. So medicine at Western, so again, this is part of this joint medicine program with Charles Sturt University. We have the Doctor of Medicine degree. This is a five-year undergraduate entry degree that qualifies you to be a medical intern in Australia and New Zealand. Whether you study at the Campbelltown campus or the Orange campus, you'll have access to state-of-the-art research facilities. The clinical schools out of which you'll be based, along with your campus base in Campbelltown or Orange, are brand new and purpose-built specifically for our students. So on this slide, you can see an example of the School of Medicine at the Campbelltown campus. This was purpose built for medicine at Western Sydney University. So this has everything a student may need. Med students spend basically all their time in this building when they are on campus. So we have the research anatomy and simulation labs, the neuroscience behavioral investigation labs, 
um, academic offices. So all of the academics who are professionals in the field have offices in this building as well. So students can get assistance from them when they need it. So one point to note is our anatomy labs are cadaver based. So people that have donated their body to science. So that means that you're learning from actual human bodies throughout your entire degree. Um, and then outside of those um, teaching and course requirement um, spaces, we also have the study and social spaces. So there's places where students can sit in groups or alone to study and socialize. And we also have a kitchenette inbuilt into this building. Um, so usually we have about 350 applicants shortlisted for interview per year um, based on the entry requirements that we'll talk about later on. So at Campbelltown, we have about 100 Commonwealth supported domestic places on offer, 28% of which are bonded places. So 72 will be Commonwealth supported and 28 will be those bonded Commonwealth supported places. Um, we do usually also have 20 positions for international students at the Campbelltown campus. And at Orange, there will be about 37 places. So the Doctor of Medicine, again, is a five-year full-time degree. Um, you do that at either the Western Sydney University Campbelltown campus or the Charles Sturt University Orange campus. So successful applicants study the degree at either one of those. Um, and it is fully accredited by the Australian Medical Council. So there'll be a combination of on-campus and off-campus study, as well as work integrated learning. Um, it is specifically tailored to the greater Western Sydney and rural communities. So Western Sydney and Charles Sturt both have a strong commitment to the regions in which they're located. So the medicine degree definitely reflects this. There is an inbuilt research project, which you will start working on at the beginning of your degree. You will get a, um, a supervisor, one of the academics at the School of Medicine, and you will work on that project throughout your degree and submit it towards the end of it. There is also a compulsory portfolio, which again, you will work on from the beginning of your degree to the end, and you'll uh, pull together all of your experience, your academic achievements, um, and your clinical placements and all of your work experience and any extra curriculars that you might do as well. When you complete this degree, you will graduate with an MD. So this qualifies you to be a medical intern in Australia or New Zealand. And then once you've done that, once you've done your internship, you can go and specialise or become a, a general practitioner. So the course structure. So we have four themes that run throughout the course, patient care, health in the community, personal and professional development and scientific basis of medicine. So you see that on this page, there is a lot of focus on the Campbelltown campus but the general essence of the core structure will be similar across Campbelltown and Orange. So in your first two years, you'll be doing your clinical sciences. This will be a combination of on campus and in a clinical school. So at Campbelltown, you'll be on campus three days a week. And then on the fourth day, you'll be in a clinical school, which is either the Blacktown Mount Druitt Hospital or the Campbelltown Hospital. Similarly, when you're in Orange, you'll have days on campus and you'll also have a day in a clinical school. So this is a combination of problem-based learning, basic sciences, including practical sessions in anatomy and physiology, your personal and professional development, introduction to clinical medicine, and your introduction to general practice and community-based learning. So you're getting a really great, well-rounded um, experience through all of that. Your clinical learning begins from the first weeks. And as you work with and learn from real patients, you'll be supported by small group collaborative learning at the bedside and on campus that continues throughout the program. So you'll really get to know all of your peers and the academics that are teaching the course as well. Um, the problem-based learning, this is based on case studies of actual patients. So you'll be working through those in small groups of your peers. Um, you'll get a case study that gives you their symptoms, some background history, how they presented at the hospital or the doctor. You'll walk th work through that in your group and then you'll figure out whether or not you got the answers right. If you were um, thinking that it was the right um, symptoms or the right disease and how you would treat it. From your third year until your fifth year is when you'll be um, extending and applying your knowledge and practical school skills in full-time clinical and community placements, including in Aboriginal medical service services. Um, you'll continue to complete your scholarly project, your research project, and build your clinical experience through placements in specialty and subspecialty um, sub medicine. So you'll be going on your rotations through hospitals. Um, your placements include surgery, medicine, um, oncology, gynecology, um, a range of different placements. 
Um, when you're studying at the Campbelltown campus, they'll take place in Greater Western Sydney hospitals, predominantly Campbelltown, Camden, Blacktown, Mount Druitt. Um, you can see a list of those there. But we do have partnerships both in Greater Western Sydney and rurally. So you'll have a combination of hospitals that you're going to and some of these placements or rotations will be in community organisations throughout the region. Um, and again, you'll continue to build your professional portfolio to create a record of your learning and your achievements. So by the time you've graduated or by the time you're coming up to graduation, you'll have everything documented. And then when you're going to apply for your internships and your jobs after that, everything will already be together and you won't need to pull it together as this is a requirement when you are applying for jobs and internships. So this is an example of a timetable of a medicine student from last year, from the second half of last year. So as you can see, medicine is quite full on. So um, most of the time you'll be expected to be on campus three days a week. So in your first two years, you'll be on campus three days a week, going through your clinical sciences, your problem-based learnings. Um, you'll have your lectures and tutorials and practicals and your group problem-based learning um, sessions. You'll be doing that basically all the way through your first two years. Um, and on the fourth day, you'll be at one of the clinical schools. So when you're studying at Campbelltown, that'll be either Blacktown Mount Druitt or the Campbelltown MacArthur Clinical School, which is on the hospital ground. Um, so you can see in here that Tuesday and Thursday are dedicated to the clinical schools. So this student would have been either on the Tuesday or the Thursday, and then the other three days they would have been on campus working through this timetable. So the rural program. So again, this is um, more focused for those Campbelltown students because the orange is already rural. But this is an opportunity for about a quarter of the students that study medicine at Campbelltown. So it's one year at a rural clinical school, which is either the Bathurst Clinical School or the Lismore Clinical School. It's between the middle of the fourth year and the middle of the fifth year. And it is based on a registration of interest. So if you don't want to do it, you don't register for it. If you do want to do it, you register. So it's usually quite in demand. Um, and there's usually a lot of people that really want to go and do this rural experience. It's the same curriculum as the other students. You rotate through your placements. It includes a rotation in Indigenous medicine. It's just a little bit different in that you're working with small communities. Um, so you get a little bit of a different feel. You're learning a little bit differently. You get to know all of the people that work in the hospital and you might get to know your patients a bit more than if you were in a big hospital in a city. There is um, subsidised purpose-built housing available near the hospitals for students. So there is um, a lot of financial assistance there and there's scholarships that are available as well. Okay, so now we'll talk about entry to medicine. Um, so we've gone through the degree itself and what that entails. Um, the entry can be quite complicated, so I'll go into a fair bit of detail here. So as an overview, um, the purpose of our admissions process is to identify students who will learn and thrive in the environments in which we teach and from which our medical students build their careers. So what you do, it is based on your ATAR, your UCAT and your interview, which I'll talk about in more detail in the coming slides. Um, so your ATAR, we know that once you meet a certain ATAR requirement, we know that you'll do well academically. So that's when we want to move on to the UCAT and the, the multi-station mini interview to make sure that you're going to meet other requirements of the degree. So to apply, you will nominate the Western Sydney Child Cert MD program in your UAC preference. You'll be asked to indicate your preference to study at either the Western Sydney University or the Child Cert University campus. Your preference will be taken into consideration but it's not guaranteed. So you will have to indicate which one you wanna to go to and you'll only receive one offer into the joint program. So if you accept an offer at Western Sydney University at Campbelltown, that's where you'll be studying or predominantly where you'll be studying. If you accept an offer from Charles Sturt, you will enroll and be a student of Charles Sturt University and undertake the Doctor of Medicine predominantly in the Central West of New South Wales. So it's important to make sure that you're aware of that and make sure that you're willing, if you're going to tick, that you're willing to go to either, either campus, that you are actually willing to do that because you won't be able to take back that, um, that application once you've gone through the process. Okay. So the first step is the um, ATAR, the Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank. So there's a few different ones here depending on what type of student you are. For Greater Western Sydney applicants, it is a 93.5 ATAR. If you're living rurally or remotely, it's a 91.5. For other students who are non-Greater Western Sydney, non-rural, it's a 95.5 ATAR. 
So this is important to note. We don't do any bonus points or adjustment factors for medicine because it is so competitive to get into. So these um, thresholds are final. Um, if you meet those requirements of the Greater Western Sydney or the Rural Remote, then you can apply through those pr processes. Um, and that will be when you're putting in your application into UAC, it'll be indicated on that. So the academic threshold requirements assess your academic ability. So we don't have any subject prerequisites. It is just based on that ATAR. And once you're above that threshold, we'll move on to the, the next steps. Um, so it is important to note as well, um, once you get an ATAR above 90, we know that you're smart and we know that you'll do well academically um, is about meeting the other requirements of that medicine degree. So the undergraduate clinical admissions test for a Australia, New Zealand, um, hopefully if you're interested in medicine, you've already heard about this and hopefully you've already registered for it, but it is a two hour computer based test to, do, to assess clinical aptitude. So it's delivered by person um, in test centers through Pearson, sorry, through test centers throughout Australia. It's a five part exam. So you've got verbal reasoning, decision-making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, and situational judgment. Registrations are now closing on the 1st of June. So to enable social distancing during the July tests, um, some registrants will need to rebook another session. So this means that they're reopening the site. So it was previously closed on the 11th of May. They're reopening it from the 22nd of May until the 1st of June. So you can go in and edit, edit your registration if you need to change it to a different day or create a registration if you missed out to begin with. Um, just as a point of reference, as of the first closing date, the 11th of May, there was 14,500 registrations for the UCAT. So there are a lot of people applying for UCAT and for medicine every single year. This is why it's so competitive and why we need to look through multiple different admissions processes. Um, so you sit your UCAT between the 1st and the 31st of July. You choose which day you want to sit that UCAT in that period and the results are released mid-September. So then the final part is the multi-station mini interview. So this is a series of short interview stations. It's eight minutes per station and it's testing to see if you have the qualities to become a great doctor. So the purpose of the multi-station, uh, the multi-mini interview is to assess non-cognitive qualities important to patients and communities, which are best assessed in person rather than through an online test. So it's covering some of the stuff that aren't covered for in that UCAT exam. So the MMIs will be held at Western Sydney University Campbelltown campus and Charles Sturt University Orange campus. Candidates, as in previous years, will book their own interview time and date via an online booking system. Um, and they'll be held at those two locations. Um, whether you want to study at Campbelltown or Orange, it doesn't matter where you do your, your test. It won't indicate where your final study location is. So if you want to study at Campbelltown, you can still do your exam at Orange or your interview at Orange. Um, but you may choose to interview at either one of those. Um, if you're an invited, invited to an interview, you will then be asked to go back into your UAC application and complete two brief statements in response to the medical admissions questionnaire. Your statements will be used to inform some interview questions that you will be doing on the day when you book your interview. Um, so the purpose of the interview is to assess your potential for success in our medical program using a series of short eight minute interviews. So you might be asked to engage with a scenario, respond to a stimulus or answer question using experiences in your life. Um, the interview questions and stations do not require any background knowledge or medical health or other specialized knowledge. So no, we're not expecting you to come in with the knowledge already because that's what you're going to be learning in that medicine degree. So for dates, if you're a domestic student, interviews will be held in November. Um, Charles Sturt University will be holding theirs from the 16th to the 20th of November and Western Sydney University at Campbelltown will be holding them from the 23rd to the 27th of November. Interview, in, invitations for interviews are issued around mid-October. So you get your results from UCAT around mid-September. They're sent out to the universities automatically, so you don't need to worry about that. And then the invitations will be issued around mid-October. Once you book your interview, it has to be within this period of time. Once you booked it, that's the final date. There won't be any dates outside of this. Um, and so you need to make sure that you are available during that time frame and that you are able to go to that interview. Okay, so now we'll go through the timelines in a bit more detail. So we're already up to May now, um, May, July, um, but the UCAT registrations opened. 
they had previously closed, but now they've been extended to the 1st of June. So you can go in and edit your booking um, or create a booking if you haven't already. You'll sit your exam, your UCAT exam in July, um, and you'll apply for UCAT from the 1st of August. So they open in August. Um, you set your preferences in UAC, you nominate the Western Sydney Charles Sturt MD program as a preference, and applications close the 30th of September. This is a hard deadline. We won't accept any applications after that date. So you make sure you get your preference into UAC by the 30th of September. From mid-September, the UCAT results are released. And then mid-October is when we send out our invitations to interview. In November is when the interviews will be held. So um, from, again, the 16th to the 20th of November for Charles Sturt at the Orange Campus, the 23rd to the 27th of November at Western Sydney University at the Campbelltown Campus. In mid-December, your ATAR is released um, and we give out offers to study medicine from January. And then the course will start mid-February in 2021. Okay, so plan B options. So that was a lot of information to go through and hopefully it all made a lot of sense. Um, plan B options. So there is no pathway into medicine. So there's not a specific way that you can transfer from one degree into a medicine degree. So what we say um, is choose another degree. So if you're thinking about your backup options, choose another degree that you think you can do well in, that you think you might be interested in studying whether or not you get into medicine in the end. So any other bachelor level degree um, and you can use your grade point average to apply rather than your ATAR. Every year that you apply for medicine, you will have to retake that UCAT exam. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but you can apply as many times as you want. And once you've started university, you can use your grade point average instead of your ATAR. Um, medical programs don't offer any recognition of prior learning or advanced standing. So you will be starting fresh from year one no matter what medicine degree you go into and no matter what undergraduate degree you did. So some people will do degrees that are completely unrelated to medicine because the School of Medicine will only look at your grade point average, not what course you've studied. studied. So if you meet that grade point average requirement um, and you've met the UCAT requirement and you go well in the interview, you can get an offer even if you studied something like business or music. So that's why we say choose something that you're passionate about that you could see yourself doing otherwise. Um, and the UCAT is only valid for entry into university for the following year. So that's why you have to take it every time that you are applying for university for a medicine degree. So that's your plan B options. A lot of people will go into something like a medical science or a science degree, but that's definitely not a requirement. Um, there's a lot of information about the medicine degree up on our web pages. Um, you can find information about the application process, frequently asked questions, um, the bonded and non-bonded places. You can find information about that as well. So this is the end of the slide, the presentation from me. Um, but if you do have any questions, you're welcome to get in contact with the university. You can find the email address and phone number on the website. So thanks for listening.